What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. My name is Duncan Dimanche. I'm a French photographer and video maker living in the sweet city of Paris. And today we're going to have a look at the clear image zoom um, capability of the A6500 and all the Sony um, series. When I first heard about the clear image zoom and all it pr its promises, you can zoom in two times without losing its quality. That's what Sony is promoting and that's what we're going to find out. And um, I want to do some macro photography, macro filming. And uh, I realized that if you're going to export in 1080p and you're shooting in 4K, meaning so you can have a clear image zoom, so you're going to zoom into the image so much then you can zoom in another four times into the image and get, you know, a full HD quality image, which in theory is insane. It's, it's, think about it. You can get so much closer to your subject. And uh, that's exactly what we're trying to find out in this video. And don't forget to subscribe, please, guys. That helps me out a lot. I'm starting this new channel. I want to put a video once a week. And that's my plan. And uh, while I'm also doing my other jobs, so please subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, let me know if you tried this uh, clear zoom thingy, image, clear image zoom um, from Sony, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this video. Let's get going. So one thing first, you need to have a really stable tripod. And uh, if you don't have a, you know, a super heavy duty tripod, put some weight on it. Uh, put some weight down to weight it down. And I had a um, Blackmagic video assist. So I could you know, focus because you're gonna get so close and the depth of field, you know, the, the image that is in focus is so narrow uh, that you need to have uh, a big screen to help you out because the back of the screen, we know of the Sony cameras are not that great. So let's get going. Sorry for the chat chat guys. Let's find out about this magic clear image zoom thingy that Sony is bragging about. So here's my little setup here and uh, use this lens, the 18 to 55, just a simple basic lens, the kit. And uh, you go into your clear image zoom on your Sony. It's going to be in different places for every model. But you can see here, you can do a nice little zoom if you don't press too hard on the camera so it doesn't shake. We positioned it and uh, here we are, 4K image and then zooming in digitally now in post-production to get some extreme macro. Here's what we had before and after, pretty intense. Another one with uh, still the 1855, some lemon and this lens not super sharp so it doesn't give this um, shot justice but uh, yeah it's very impressive and now we're zoomed in at 200 percent plus the clear image zoom it's intense and uh, now the 60 millimeter macro lens so I'm gonna move the flower closer and uh, see the drop at the middle Okay, clear image zoom all the way and um, I'm refocusing it to get it perfectly sharp and now yeah, you can see how close I get it's 150 percent zoom and now 200 percent I hope that it shows well but it's pretty still pretty sharp on my screen right now it might be you know, a bit blotchy and not as good once it hits YouTube, but we'll see. And I like the panning here. It's pretty awesome to be able to do that in post-production. Another shot that I took. And now I zoomed in 150%. The detail is still there. It's pretty impressive. Now here's the slow motion and you cannot unfortunately do the clear image zoom while you're shooting 120 frames per second but look how cool it is I'm using the macro lens still the nikon 
see how narrow the depth of field is. I wanted to see how you know how the two compared. If I should do you know a four a two hundred percent zoom in post production and shoot four K or zoom before with a clear image zoom. And uh, here it is at two hundred percent four K. And now side by side, it's hard to tell the difference really. Um, I couldn't on my screen, so I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to tell. But let me know what you think. And this is pretty much the image that we're getting. It's pretty insane. It is so close. Imagine just putting a little ant on this shot right here. It would be amazing. And um, yeah, another side by side. Zoomed in all the way. And we should have a 1080p you know, output. Can you guess what this is? I couldn't tell what this little pointy thing was. I was trying to poke it with my knife and I realized that there was some a hair or something on the tip of my knife. But everything was so small that I could not, I couldn't poke it at all. It was really hard. And here's the screen, the LCD, to show you a difference on the, the clarity of the black magic. It's really amazing. And that's a cucumber. So I'm zooming in all the way with the 200% crop here. Okay, everyone, that's it for this video. I'm gonna put some uh, more samples afterwards so you can watch if you want to see some more um, images that are shot. So as you can see, guys, you're losing some sharpness while zooming in uh, with a clear image zoom. Um, that said, though, um, I'm still gonna be using it. It's very handy. I've uh, got a list here of what you can do with it. So you can turn a prime into a zoom lens. So if you have you know, a 50 millimeter, millimeter 1.8, you can turn it into a 100 millimeter 1.8. And uh, that's pretty amazing. You can, it helps you keep a safe distance. As you can see, um, when I was shooting the candle, I don't want the lens to be too close to, um, to the, the heat. So that's a cool thing. Um, it helps you get really close to the subject. Obviously, you saw that. Um, you can get some more reach also if you have a zoom lens and uh, if you have a 300 millimeter you can turn it into a 600 millimeter which is insane. What I like about the clean range zoom is you can also zoom in with your prime or whatever lens you have so you don't have to do it in post-production and shoot in 4k in order to end up you know with a 1080p. You can shoot in 1080p and zoom in and keep you know a smaller, smaller file size and uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. The only mode you can't shoot with the clear image zoom is the 1080p, 120 frames per second. That's the only time you can't do it. So should you shoot in 4K and crop it afterwards, or should you use the clear image zoom to crop it initially? Um, I would say shoot in 4K, shoot wider, because you can always crop in wherever you want. You can also do some sliding, you know, in and out, some panning, I mean, and, um, yeah, and you get the same quality pretty much. So, yeah, I think that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video, guys. I had a lot of fun doing it. it took me a while, but uh, I got some cool shots, and I uh, hope that you learned from something from it. So, subscribe to my channel if you did. Give me a thumbs up. Ask me your questions, and uh, I'll answer them. Promise. Till next week.